Hi, this is Chris Shattuck with buildamodule.com, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about how to add CSS and JavaScript to your module. So once you've started building your module and you have a grasp of hooks, probably one of the one of the first things you're going to do is is need to add a CSS file or a JavaScript file in order to to add functionality to your module and the look and feel, of course. So, um, but what do you do? Where's the best place to put your CSS files? How do you add them? So in this short video, I'm going to cover a few things. I'm going to cover how do you add a CSS file, where do you add it in the module, and what about adding it in line, you know, as opposed to in an external file. Let's look at four different examples of how different modules are using uh, JavaScript and CSS files. How do they add it into their module? So um, let's take a look at a, a common module called DHTML menu. Um, this module allows an expansion and contraction of a menu tree, of your navigation menu tree, without reloading the page. Um, it needs some JavaScript and CSS to do that. So, so here we can see um, that the DHTML menu module is calling the init hook. And this hook is intended to allow people to add, uh, run things, after all of the um, all of the Drupal files have been loaded, but before anything has been output yet. So this is what you want to use when you need to add something to a page. Um, in many cases, when you need to add a file to a page before it gets presented to the viewer. So this is this is where we want to put our CSS files and our JavaScript files. So we'll look at um, at both examples for this one. Um, you can see this line here. There's a Drupal add CSS function, and that function, with that function, you can add a file, and it will it'll create a registry of CSS files, which will then get added to the to the page once it's output. Now there are several places where you can put CSS files. You can put them directly in a template file, for example. But the downside to doing that is that you don't benefit from several other things that happen with uh, with the files registered this way. So one thing, uh, one important thing, for example, is that there's an option to aggregate CSS files. And what this does is, is compress all of the CSS files into a single file, which drast can drastically reduce the, uh, the upload time, the download time of a page. You know, it just takes a while to load when there's so many CSS files to process. So CSS files added this way will get added to that, that um, compression, that optimization. So it's a good place to do that. You can see that there's also another function being used here called Drupal Get Path. And this is a handy function that will allow you to, um, no matter where your function is or where your page is, what this will do is create a, an, a relative path to a module or a theme depending on what parameter you pass it. So in, in this example, we're passing in a module, and then we're passing it the module name. And what this will do is get the directory to that module. So you don't have to do any guesswork if your Drupal installation is in a subfolder, or if you move things around a little bit, and uh, you know the, the actual path changes uh, of the page where you need to add this stuff. So, this is a good function to know and to have in your, uh, you'll memorize it after a while. Um, notice that you still need a backslash, or so, sorry, a forward slash before the, the file name. Um, but this will add the file in. If we look at the JavaScript example, um, you can see that it's it's pretty much the same thing, except um, it's add JS instead of add CSS. Notice this is also in the init hook. So, this is a really simple, um, simple example. Let's take a look at a slightly more advanced one. So this is the admin module, admin menu dot module. And uh, <clears throat> something that this module does in the init hook init is that it, um, it checks some different parameters before actually loading the CSS or JavaScript. So if we look at the first line here, we see if user access, access administration menu. So this is checking to see if a user has this permission. And if they do, 
then we'll continue on with this. If not, then we don't want to add any of the JavaScript or CSS because that's just going to bloat our code and the user isn't going to use it anyways. So, so first, first checks for that. Then add some default, uh, some default, a default CSS and, and JavaScript file. And then it checks some other items. So, um, it, in administrative, in, in admin menu, you can set some different variables. So, for example, example, um, do we want there, this checks for a variable called admin menu margin top, which implies that maybe there's a setting for how, how much of a margin the, the menu should get from the top. Um, so it checks for this and then it will add a, a JavaScript file conditionally. And you can see that this pattern is repeated throughout. So this is one way to optimize your init, your hook init, is by um, not adding CSS or JavaScript files unless they're absolutely needed. So let's look at, at another example here. In five-star module, um, this this uses a slightly different format here. So you can see that that um, that this add.js and CSS calls these uh, these calls are not in the init function. So the init isn't the only place where you can do this. There there are other locations in your module where you can add JS and CSS. Init is the you know for sure that it's going to be added. So um, so it's a good default place for it. But for this example, um, this is a theme function, which themes a form. And so there, there, in this particular case, there's some JavaScript and CSS that's needed for the form in particular, but it's not need, needed anywhere else. So what they've done is added the JavaScript and CSS here at the top, um, and that will add it whenever this form is generated. Let's look at just one more quick example here. Um, this uh, in uh, the pingfix module um, allows uh, IE Internet Explorer 6 to use uh, transparent pings. Um, so you can see here, this is the, the init. Uh, it's using the init hook again. What this does is, it again, it checks for a variable. And if that variable is empty um, or isn't empty, then it will go ahead and add the JavaScript. So, Here's another conditional example, a way to optimize your code so you're not bloating it. This also brings us to the third question that we had, which was, what if we want to add JavaScript or CSS inline? Well, whereas everything else is the same, pretty much the same for JavaScript or CSS, this particular task is different for them both. So for JavaScript, um, the pingfix init uh, hook here uh, also provides us an example of an in using JavaScript inline. So we're going to still use the, the Drupal add.js function, but we're going to pass it the inline parameter. So this says we, we don't want a, um, an external file, we want it internally. So you can see the JavaScript is being defined here. So sometimes this is handy um, if you need to create some dynamic JavaScript based on the page, um, some, some parameter in the page, like the path or an argument or something. But on the whole, this is, a, this is not a favorable thing to do. And, and the, the big reason is that when you add JavaScript to your page, um, it, adds, uh, it adds a bunch of code to it, which makes it difficult to read for screen readers. Um, also, uh, the, there's some debate as to whether that could have an impact on your search engine ranking. So if you have a, a bunch of JavaScript on your page, then this uh, search engine spiders won't necessarily run through the entire page if there's an awful lot there. You know, they'll stop at some point. Um, and if they stop before your content, then, um, then that's kind of lame. So, so here's, here's just one example. It's a single line, so it makes sense. It just runs the, the ping fix function on um, any classes that are passed to it. You know, I missed uh, one aspect here, which was what do you do when you're adding CSS in line? So uh, it differs from J, uh, JavaScript because whereas you can use the Drupal add JavaScript to add inline uh, JavaScript, you can't you do the same thing with the CSS file. So the solution there is to create a separate external file with the particular styles that are conditional and um, add that into the page using Drupal add CSS that way. So you still need to do external files with CSS. 
it's a good uh, good habit to get into because like JavaScript, if you can have a bunch of uh, styles in your page, it, it waters down the content. So um, this, this I believe, will be changing in Drupal 7. There's, a, there's an inline version for Drupal Add CSS, so um, look out for that. Um, but this should get you started. Uh, good luck and happy coding.